Hello and welcome to a Powerline Systems video on modeling a hybrid pole in PLS Pole. PLS Pole has the ability to model a pole consisting of multiple materials, but there are extra steps that need to be taken to ensure that the pole is modeled correctly. We're going to start this video with an almost brand new pole model with a standard interface. When starting a new pole model, you'll first want to make sure that you have all of your preferences set. I have already specified my preferences, but you may need to download additional component libraries or work with your vendor to create a component library. Many of these files are also available through the Powerline Systems website or can be copied from other projects. There isn't a unique hybrid pole library. We will be using two different pole types stacked on top of one another. The pole component libraries we will be using in this demonstration are the steel pole properties library, the concrete pole properties library, and I'll end up using our framing library at the very end. To start modeling the hybrid pole, we need to determine what the base and top sections are going to be. In this demonstration, we'll be looking at a concrete base section with a steel top. This configuration is unique, but does exist as the concrete base provides rust and corrosion protection while the steel top section allows for taller poles and reduced shipping charges. We'll start with the properties of each pole as this will be important in creating the model. First, let's look at our concrete pole component library which you'll need to get from your concrete pole vendor by clicking on Components, Concrete Pole. The important item to note in this library is that 30 feet of our 70 foot pole is embedded. This leaves 40 feet above ground reveal. We will also note the tip diameter of our concrete pole as we will match this with our steel pole base diameter. Next, we will look at our steel pole component library found by clicking on Components, steel pole. In this example we have a 12-sided pole and we've specified a base diameter that is approximately equal to the concrete pole tip diameter. Concrete to steel pole connection details will need to be worked through with the concrete and steel pole vendors. To have a visually appealing model I have set the base diameter of the steel pole equal to the tip diameter of the concrete pole but this is not absolutely necessary. I also need to make sure that I do not have a default embedment set for this pole property. For this model, we are simply going to attach the bottom of the steel pole onto the top of the concrete pole. Again, we need to make note of the pole length, which is 110 feet. Since we're going to be modeling this pole with two different materials, we'll need to start with the base section and add the top section later. Open the concrete pole geometry dialog by clicking on Geometry, Concrete Poles. For the base section, I'll model just as I would any direct embed pole. If you look at the note in the upper left area of our window, we will see the two options for modeling pole sections. We'll model this bottom section using the X, Y, and Z of base option. For the top section, we will use the base and tip joint location option. We'll label this pole CP for concrete pole and leave everything else blank except for our property set. No need to create attachment labels. PLS Pole automatic automatically creates a tip and base joint label for all pole sections. Also, we are not attaching anything to the pole. Now to model the top portion of the pole, we will start by adding a global joint where the top of the pole will be. Open the Joint Geometry dialog by clicking on Geometry Joints. Because the pole is not being fixed to the ground, we will have to specify the joints for the pole top and bottom. For my top section, I'm going to use a 110 foot pole. When I add this pole length to the 40 foot reveal from the concrete pole, I get a total of 150 feet. I'll add a single joint labeled A that is free in all directions at a Z of 150 feet. If the joint is fixed in any direction, the pole tip will not be allowed to move in that direction, which is not realistic for the situation. We do not need to create a base joint for the pole in this dialog. Now that we have our base section and tip joint modeled, we can model the top section of our pole. To do this, we'll model a top pole section with the base on top of the concrete pole section and a tip at the joint we just created. Open the steel pole geometry dialog by clicking Geometry, Steel Poles. We'll label this pole SP for steel pole. And since I'm using the base and tip joint option for modeling this pole, I'll specify my tip joint as AP and my base joint as CPT. The only other field we need to set is our property set. Again, it's important that the pole length match the distance between the top of the concrete pole 
in the global joint. If it does not match, an error will appear. We can now see the base section is rendered as a concrete pole, with the top section rendered as a steel pole. Once we have our pole modeled, we are ready to frame our pole either with the graphical commands, the geometry menu, or with the framing library. Since modeling the rest of the pole follows the same steps as modeling any pole, I will take the easy way out and use a framing element that I imported into this model. For information on using the Framing Manager, please see the webinars available through the latest versions of the software, or watch the YouTube video linked at the bottom of this window. As a final step, we can run an analysis on this pole so we can see how these two pole sections behave under loading. When I look at my form geometry, I can see that I have an entire pole deflecting together as if it were a single pole section, just as I would expect. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at To receive a quote for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powline.com. And for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powline.com. Thank you for watching and for your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.